Andy Martino and Jim Duquette. I mean, I was shocked when I heard about this. Andy, what went on here? Were you shocked? What were you thinking when you first heard this news? Everyone was shocked, Sal, including a lot of people who work in high-ranking positions for the New York Mets. Uh, I can't emphasize enough how different this is from the expectation, uh, including uh, the expectations of Steve Cohen and Billy Epler, uh, and how this was going to play out. Epler took the job uh, knowing that a Stearns a type, if not Stearns himself, would uh, eventually potentially be in this job, president of baseball ops. And uh, Steve Cohen really likes Billy Epler and has continued to say, uh, in contrast, of course, to Buck Showalter, that Epler would be part of the leadership team here uh, moving forward. Now, Cohen absolutely loves David Stearns now, too, but that wasn't supposed to be mutually exclusive. Uh, it, again, it's a shocking turn of events. Uh, the Mets haven't had a lot to say yet. Uh, Jim and I are talking to sources, and I'll, I'll let Jim probably start with that, and then we'll have a discussion there. But I, I just want to emphasize from my end, Sal, how this was not how it was drawn up at all. Like, if you want to sit out there and say, like, not you, Sal, but if one wants to sit out there and say, oh, sure, it's inevitable. The guy got uh, hired over, so they hired over him. This is what happens. No, no, no. This was not what anyone thought was going to happen. Yeah, it's stunning, uh, in, you know, really, when you think about it, you know, to your point there, Sal, Andy, and you both of you, I think, you know, with him, up until recently, uh, they were looking forward, or at least Billy was looking forward to working with David Stearns. And, you know, there's been a lot of rumors swirling today, and that's the hard part is, you know, you don't know what you, what's true and what's not at the moment. I will say this, that, that you know, there was a lot of excitement that, that they could divide up the duties of this job, because it's a big job, and that they had known each other for a while, but then there's... You know, there been some conversation recently about, you know, okay, there's a recent article in the newspaper about friction between the general manager and the manager over personnel issues. That's not all that surprising. But then, you know, when you make a change like this, sometimes there are things that come out that you're that that only come out when there's a change in the front office. And so there's some things there behind the scenes that that I think, you know, in terms of communication that you start to hear that those I think are valid. But outside of that, the, the hard part is there's a lot of speculation um, otherwise on what ended up happening. If they had this great relationship, then he wouldn't be resigning, right? So, you know, I think that calls into question the relationship itself. Or if it were just a new president coming in, this would have been announced a couple of days ago, maybe the same timeline, maybe a little bit after Buck Showalter, but that was not the case. The owner said Epler's going to stay. We want more talent in the front office. That's why this is a shock. I just don't understand it. Andy, so what's next here? Do the Mets now look to still hire a new general manager, or this is the David Stern show? Couldn't tell you, Sal. That's how shocking this is right now. Uh, Jim and I are not going to sit up here and bluster like we have a full understanding of what happened and what moves forward. As Jim said, we've talked to people. Um, we're hearing uh, different things about that Stearns Apple relationship and how it's maybe evolved or not evolved as this has moved forward. But it, 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 it's very important to for us to take a step back and, and separate fact from gossip, too. Um, and in terms of the very basic question of are the Mets going to hire a GM right now? I will get back to you on that, and I'd like to have an answer as soon as I can. That's how much of a fire drill this is, man. There's no uh, rollout of a, of a message or a plan here just yet. It's like, what? Uh, yeah, no, understood. And clearly the facts are what they are. If they had a great relationship, they'd, I assume, still be working together. All right, how about the hiring of a manager, Jim? How does this impact the timetable of what the Mets are trying to do with hiring a new manager? Well, I think it delays it a little bit, you know, now, unless unless it's a great council type of hire. You know, I think David Stearns doesn't need, and he's gone through, uh, you know, a, a somewhat of a managerial search in his career, certainly with the Astros. He, he ended up not hiring. He wasn't the one who hired Craig Council, but he, he obviously has been around Craig Council and knows him. So, you know, that is something that's going to uh, play itself out quickly. I don't think you need an awful lot of help in that regard. Uh, but I do think that, you know, Speculation would tell me that they need that extra front office guy. Like David Stearns would want to bring in somebody that he's familiar with and that he knows. Uh, and so I, I do think eventually they end up hiring that general manager. But you know, I do think from the manager's spot, that is there's more of a priority to hire a manager first, I think, because David Stearns can handle that job himself. Um, up until they get that manager on board. So, you know, I think that would be the order of it, would be manager first and general manager. But, again, we'll have to wait and see on that one.
Yeah, uh, just to add to that, I agree with Jim that manager is a higher priority. Uh, you had to have somebody running baseball operations, president of baseball operations, GM. These titles evolve over the years. He's the head guy, just like Branch Rickey was once the head guy. Like, it's not rocket science here. So they have the infrastructure in place to hire a manager right now. Uh, but I do think it changes the uh, – I know that it changes the process a bit because – what was going on on Sunday and Monday was that Epler and Stearns were looking forward to combining their lists of people, not just for manager, but for very important behind the scenes jobs that are vacant right now, head of player development, head of pro scouting. Uh, the Mets have a lot of hiring to do and Epler has his, his list of people, Stearns has his list of people and they were getting ready to combine them. That was gonna be the process. So for example, uh, I was, certainly expecting Eric Chavez to get an interview. Eric Chavez has been somebody since he played for the Yankees and then worked for the Yankees, worked for the Angels, worked for the Mets, has been someone who's been very close to Billy Epler uh, and had, was the bench coach of the Mets last year, and you figure he's going to get a shot to manage the team. That's not to say he won't, but all of a sudden his guy is gone. Uh, there are front office people that Epler brought in uh, that now you wonder, are those going to be new vacancies? Uh, so they were getting ready to add and as I said, combined lists of candidates for things, and now uh, that's not happening. Uh, one of the reasons why I think uh, Met fans at least were under the impression that Billy Epler was here was because of him luring Shohei Otani to the Angels, looking ahead, maybe him bringing Otani to the Mets. Jim, how does this impact the Mets' pursuit of Shohei Otani no longer with Billy Epler in the organization? I think it impacts it a little bit. You know, I think it's hard to know for sure in the long run if it, if it has a major impact. Because I always think whenever you're trying to sign players, it's always about the money, right? So, you know, I do think that, you know, with Otani, you had an inside edge. You had a trust factor there because he had uh, pursued and actually uh, sold Otani on Anaheim back in the time when he was the general manager. So the feeling was, okay, if you know the, the, the player, the individual, he has a comfort level with you, you can sell him on the process on, on winning, what you're trying to do here long term, and you give him the money, that would give you an inside track. Uh, if he, if Otani had any uncertainty, especially when you hear about him potentially coming to the East Coast. So I think that takes a little bit of a hit if the Mets still plan on pursuing him. They could still get him, obviously, by by the old-fashioned way, just writing the big old check and hmm. playing check, check with baseball. But I think the familiarity will hurt in this particular case. Yeah, I mean, he did have a relationship with Otani bringing him to the Angels, no question. This is not going to help get Otani here.